Well, the top of the morning to you, and welcome to It's a Good Life. Today's episode is called Control Your Own Economy. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a second here. I don't control the economy. I'm not in charge of interest rates and taxation and foreign policy. How can I control the economy? Well, this episode is to help you control your own personal economy. The six inches between your ears, your outlook, your attitude, and your effort are all things you can control and ultimately how you can control your own economy. Every year for the past 20 years, on New Year's Day, I begin listening to a recorded series by my mentor, Jim Rohn. It's called How to Have Your Best Year Ever, recorded in the late 80s. So more than 30 years old, I listen to this every year. It always startles me what I hear new again. But Jim was asked before this recording to comment on the economy. He was asked to comment on current affairs and how that would ultimately change people's application of what they did in that particular year. And Jim's answer after he thought about it quite a bit was, in classic Jim Rohn fashion, it's all the same. It's all the same. Taxes are too high. Interest rates cost too much. The Republicans and Democrats are the same. And I don't know about you, but I actually get a great sense of comfort of knowing that things are actually the same. They're all packaged differently. The clickbait and hysterical way things are now reported. But the truth of the matter is, things are all the same. And what Jim said 30 years ago is as true as it was then. No matter what the rates are, no matter what the government's doing, no matter what is going on in the world, we all have the ability to control our own personal economy. And that's what today's episode is all about. So I have three main points for you, as I always do. First, I want to share with you that there's nothing new. The second thing I'm going to talk to you about is how to control yourself. And then third, how to control your economy. So there is nothing new under the sun. We do say that. And then circumstances are the same. I want to share with you. Here are the top five business concerns, according to the Chamber of Commerce. Taxes are too high. Number two, government wastes money. Number three, capital costs too much. Four, expenses are too high. And five, employees are unproductive. Believe it or not, that was a survey that was done at the end of 2022. Believe it or not, I looked up the one from 1979, and it's the same five concerns in the same order. As Jim Rohn said, it's the same. And we need to be encouraged by that. Everything's gaslit and everything's 24-hour news cycles. And what happens is all that stuff just wears us down and wears us down. It takes us to an anxious place. It takes us to a fearful place. We just don't know what the future is going to hold. The book of Ecclesiastes was written by the richest man who ever lived. His name was King Solomon. He said, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Marie Antoinette said, there is nothing new except what has been forgotten. It's amazing to me what we always forget. We forget the fundamentals. We forget the blessings. We forget the things that we're grateful for. And we forget that these principles that have existed for thousands of years that have helped people become successful are still true and will be true for thousands of years from now. And we can lean into that. So it is all the same. Secondly, distribution is new, but the content's the same. We used to See people on a train. I used to show this image at our seminars of a train full of people. In those days, it was men going to work, a black and white photograph, and every single person sitting next to one another on the train, 100% of the people with their nose in a newspaper. And then I show a picture of today and, and a similar train with men and women and people of all kinds of colors and ethnicities, but everybody with their nose in a phone. It's the same. And so we have to understand, there is nothing new under the sun. There obviously has been changes in the technology and changes in how we go about it, and there's a bombardment. You know, you had to go and buy a newspaper. You had to go and read the newspaper. Well, now your phone dings and messages come in, and it seeks after you. The newspaper didn't go, oh, you like this article, therefore you're gonna, all you're going to see is articles related to that. And that's what we have to deal with today. So the format's the same, but the technologies are newer. A recent report that came out just talked about the increase in online and digital activities. Watching more shows and films on streaming services up 54%. 
spending longer time using social media is up 43%. Spending longer on messenger service, 42%. Listening to more music and streaming services, up 37%. Spending more time on mobile apps, up 36%. Spending more time playing computer and video games, 35%. Creating and uploading videos, 16%. And listening to more podcasts. Well, wow, there's one I like, and that's up 15%. There's some that are entertaining, but you at least can find some education or some encouragement or some uh, inspiration there. The fact of the matter is all of those dynamics are up. I would say very few of those categories I listed off are helping you control your personal economy. Christian Louis Lang said, technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. Steve Jobs, technology by itself doesn't create leaders. Technology only amplifies true leadership. The start of the year, I deleted about a third of the apps I uh, go to. I have radically reduced the amount of time I spend on uh, news. And I've also made it a goal that every week this year, when I look at my iPhone and it gives me my little Sunday report, that the number of hours or time I spend on the phone goes down every single week. So I'm making it a commitment that every week I'm going to spend less time on my phone than I did the week before. The third part about how there's really nothing new is that negativity sells. A recent study by an organization called Quora showed that 90% of media coverage is negative. What is the media in the business of? Are they in the business of reporting news? or what? No, they're in the eyeballs business. They sell advertising. Media is I provide content and sell advertising. That's why we're very excited. There's very few ads on this program. And if you don't want to listen to the ads, you can spend five bucks for an entire month and get all the podcasts on Apple Plus with It's a Good Life. You can get our podcast and never have to listen to an ad once. Isn't that great? The bottom line is media uses its content to sell advertising. And what sells is the more negative, the more eyeballs, the more sensational, the more listeners. Therefore, you can sell more advertising. Bad stuff just happens to stick, that's all. People have developed a negativity bias. And when they sense a threat in their mind, their mind actually highlights it, okay? And so then this negativity is leveraged by the media to increase profits and through the clickbait headlines, the sensationalism, and the spin. If you're a parent, you know this. Google search results also react to the pattern by giving people what they seemingly want, which is more negative and more bad news. So it's important. Negativity sells, but negativity has an impact. When you consume more negativity, you are by nature more negative. Like how can you consume a diet of negativity and be positive? How can you eat junk food all day long and be healthy? We know that. Garbage in, garbage out. We know that. So we know there's nothing new under the sun. We know it is the same. Distribution is new, but the content's the same. Negativity sells. If you're going to control your own economy, you need to control what's going into your mind, what's going into your heart. The second dynamic is control yourself, right? What can you control? Well, the first thing is know the truth. Know the truth. Important to know the truth about yourself. One of the things we've been encouraging you to do is to go on the It's a Good Life website, and hopefully you see now we have these eight wonderful categories of personal growth and money and business growth or real estate, whatever you want to hear more about. We've actually categorized our content for you, and we give you three or four episodes in each fabulous category. It's sitting there. You'll see an opportunity there to get a business consultation. If you decide you want to control your economy and you want to learn about how to grow your business, get a business assessment, and one of our expert staff will meet with you and say, hey, here's where your business is, and here's where it can go. Fantastic. The also thing we have on there is called a real strengths assessment. And the first thing to know the truth about is the truth about yourself. So we've developed this thing over the past couple of years. We've used it in our coaching for 27 years, and that is, where does a person's real strengths lie in the area of communication, selling, serving? And you can take that now for free, and I'm just delighted to provide that for you. You go on there, it's a bunch of cool questions. You'll enjoy the process pretty quick, and you'll get this cool assessment that'll tell you the truth about you that you can lean into. So when you're trying to control yourself, like here's where my strengths are, and conversely, here's where my weaknesses are. Know the truth. Epictetus said, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within your control and some things are not. The number one thing I want to control is me. I want to control my emotions. I want to control my reactions. I want to control my routines. I want to control my day. I want to control my attitude. 
I want to control my effort. And so I want to control my outlook. I'm going to diminish this and listen to this. I'm going to not read this. I'm going to start reading that. I'm going to not spend as much time around these people. I'm going to start spending more time around these people. Why? Because these people tear down and these people build up. Henry David Thoreau said, think for yourself or others will think for you without thinking of you. Oof, powerful. One of my favorite ancient proverbs says, if the words don't add up, it's usually because the truth wasn't included in the equation. So know the truth about yourself. Know the truth about the market. Know the truth about the circumstances. Do your homework. Control your own self if you want to control your economy. Second thing you want to do here is create a strategy, okay? Create a strategy. What's your plan of attack? You know, what's your plan for controlling your business? For example, at Buffini Company, we have a plan this year for growth. Now, it's not sensational growth because you're growing against an economy that is shrinking. Uh, a lot of our clients are in the real estate and mortgage space, and that's a harder hit area than most. Although many of our clients are doing very well as they should be because they're controlling their own economy. Obviously, it was easier when the rates were 3% as opposed to 6.5%. But the fact of the matter is you got to control your outlook, control your attitude, control your effort. People still want to buy a house. People still want to move. People still want to sell a house. It's just a little more work and a little more effort and a little more energy. And by the way, there's a little less competition. Why? Because it's a little harder. So Buffini and Company going into this year, we have a plan for growth, not exponential growth, but solid growth. We intend to grow. We're going to outgrow if there's a recession. We're going to outgrow inflation. We have a plan in place to grow. That's our strategy. And there's specific things we're doing to grow our business. What is your specific strategy? And again, I've given people this tip. Your plan should include outgrowing the rate of inflation. So if the rate, inflation rate today is 6.5%, allowing for a little taxation, you might want to say that means I need to grow at 9 or 10%. I need to grow my business by 9 or 10%. What's your plan? Well, it probably means you need at least 10%, maybe 15% more leads. Well, in order to generate those leads, you might need 20% more activities. Where do you spend in your time? Where are you spending your effort? Where are you spending your dollars? One of the things that happens when a raging hot market then cools is people have money and they think the money can buy the effort. So I'll put the money into this advertising campaign or this marketing campaign. And the truth of the matter is a lot of times you're wasting the money. The fact of the matter is, what are your core fundamentals for generating customers and how can you invest to support that? In my case, I've made a commitment to delight my customers this year at our live events, with our coaching, with our training, and with our podcast. We want to delight you, our audience. And this is part of that today. I hope you're delighted when you finish this program today and you're thinking, hang on a second here, I can control my own economy. That's a pretty cool thing. You know, I've been taking all this news and people give me feedback and how bad things are and how bad the market is. And Oh, I'm actually in control. I can control my own economy. Hopefully that delights you. That's what we're doing. And so create your strategy. Lee Bowman said, a vision without a strategy just remains an illusion. Sun Tzu, who wrote The Art of War, said, tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So you got to have the strategy. My man, Jim Rohn, said, success is 20% skill and 80% strategy. So we want to control ourselves. We want to know the truth. We want to create a strategy and we want to stick to the plan. Once we have a strategy, the plan is how am I going to implement it, right? It's a set of activities. It's a budget. It's a list of big goals and then the mini goals to knock them out. What's the plan? You got to have a plan. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Again, the great Jim Rohn. Dave Cottrell said frequently, the difference between success and failure is the resolve to stick to your plan long enough to win. Head and rear down. Okay, let's go. Let's fight. Until I have empirical evidence that the plan isn't working and then I don't scrap the plan. I adjust the plan, but head and rear down. And, and again, we're in a microwave society. Oh, I put it in place. I did this for three weeks. And what happened? Got to keep going. Antoine de Saint said, uh, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So we want to make sure we know the truth. We create the strategy. We stick to the plan. Lastly, we want to control our specific economy. Now, this might surprise you. I uh, had a chance recently to meet the creator director and producer of a show called The Chosen. It's a fabulous program about the life and times of Jesus. It's pretty well done. I really enjoyed it. 
and had a chance to meet this guy in a Q&A session, pretty interesting character. And he said something that just startled me. He said, yeah, we just hit the 500 million mark for views. I said, like, you mean social media? And he goes, no, no, we've had 500 million people stream this thing. And I said, well, how come nobody knows that? Like, how come nobody knows that? Like, when Top Gun Maverick has 20 million views, everyone on the planet knows it. So how is the most watched streamed television series possibly ever in the history of mankind? Nobody knows it. Now, for a person to me of faith, it was extremely encouraging to know that worldwide people are still interested in the story of Jesus and this program that was built around it. It's just really encouraging to know there was 500 million people out there. And I go, hang on, that's wild. And it wasn't on any news and it wasn't on Good Morning America and it's not on any great social media stuff and it's nowhere to be found, actually. The word's gotten out. Well, similarly, when you control your own economy, I'm going to share with you some stats from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that might shock you because this is not news. 77% of small business owners are optimistic about the future of their business. That is just not being reported. Okay, so the Chamber of Commerce has six and a half million members that are all small business owners. So they're pretty well informed and they surveyed their membership and 77% said, I'm optimistic about the future, which tells me as much about who the entrepreneur is as what they actually view about the economy. And just like those 500 million people who watch that show, The Chosen, this is what's underneath the real truth of what's actually taken place, okay? Nearly 5.4 million new businesses were created in 2021, okay? Numbers are still coming in for 2022, but it looks like it's going to be about similar. Up from 4.3 million. Guess what? 20% increase over the norms. People think it's a great time to own a business and grow a business and start a business when many people will give you the, oh, no, now's not the time. Rates are high. Inflation is high. Recession is in. The Russians are in Ukraine. Oil prices are crazy. You know, all the different stuff. The vast majority of people who own a business are optimistic about their future because they're controlling their own economy. McKinsey is a giant consulting firm out of New York, and they have three rules for creating growth, right? Which is what we're talking about. They said, don't be a laggard. Don't just go with the flow. Outgrow your peers, which I think is easier to do now than ever before. Turbocharge your core is their second principle. Focus on growth in your core business, your core business. Where's the primary source of where your customers come from? Where's the primary place that your customers are delighted? Who refers you and how? Go there. You know, fish in the pond that's producing the fish, right? Go to where there's actually fish you're biting and stick with that bait and just really focus on it and do it well. And then the third thing McKinsey's were saying was grow where you know and focus on your ownership advantage. Grow where you know, all right? And what your advantage is in the marketplace to your customer base, to your community. Lee Iacocca, who's uh, turned around Chrysler Motors, famously depicted in the Ford versus Ferrari movie, said, in the end, all business operations can be reduced to three words, people, product, and profits. It's not that complicated. Infuse the energy into your people. Infuse your people to infuse energy into your customers. The product you serve, the service you provide, and then ultimately the profits, right? Income less expenses equals profit. Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great, said profits is like oxygen. Food, water, and blood for the body, they're not the point of life, but without them, there's no life. So we've got to have those profits. So the next major point I give you in controlling your economy is maintain your expenses. So we grow our revenues. That's what we did with McKinsey. Now we need to maintain our expenses. What do people normally do? Market changes, rates get high, things get expensive, news gets negative, people get fearful, and they cut expenses. And a lot of times what they do, you ever heard the phrase, don't cut off your nose to spite your face? Very Irish phrase. Well, people cut off the oxygen of the very things that make them successful. I've been at the business a long, long time, and I've been coaching people a long, long time. Last December, we had the highest rate of cancellations in our coaching we've had in about five years. I've seen it before. People get nervous. People get scared. I need to cut out an expense. Great. Let me cut out the coaching expense. Doesn't seem to be needed. Now, let me tell you the story. So this is probably my fifth or sixth cycle like this I've seen in the coaching business. The people who are sticking in are leaning into their coach more than ever before, leaning into the systems, executing better, and will grow. 
I guarantee you, 18, 24 months from now, I will have dozens and dozens of calls and letters and people who went, look, I got out of coaching. I stopped doing what I was doing. I thought I could save a few bucks that way. And my business is down 60%. My business is down 70%. I've seen this hundreds of times over the decades. And it's like, hang on a second here. How much was it costing you? 500 bucks a month? And you lost 400 grand in revenue? Yeah. Well, that was a good investment. You want to maintain your expenses. If somebody's in a coaching program with me, then they've increased their income two, three, four, five, six, seven times. That's working. If you're doing this particular marketing and it's producing six, seven, eight times a response rate, you do that. You cut out the stuff that's not working, the subscriptions that aren't getting any results for you. That's the stuff you cut out. The first thing you need to cut out is your lifestyle expenses that have grown during a boom period. And you've gotten a little fat and cushy on certain things. Okay. And so it's Maxwell House instead of Starbucks. That's the stuff. You got to maintain your expenses and make sure that you maintain them so that you're investing. And you got to get a rate of return. Every time you spend a dollar in your business, what's the rate of return? Dave Ramsey says, you must gain control over your money or the lack of it will forever control you. Sam Walton, who I refer to all the time, said this, control your expenses better than your competition. This is where you can always find the competitive advantage. And Ben Franklin said, beware little expenses. A little leak will sink a great ship. And see, that's the deal. It's the little expenses that do it. By the way, Ben Franklin was actually America's first millionaire. So it's the little expenses. So we talked about grow your revenues. We talked about maintain your expenses. Now we talk about invest in the future. John F. Kennedy said, change is the law of life. Those who look only to the past and present are going to miss the future. Abe Lincoln said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. And Dr. Meg J said, do something that adds value to who you are. Do something that's an investment in who you might want to be as you grow. The fact of the matter is, you want to grow your revenues, maintain your expenses, invest in your future. You want to make sure you're controlling your economy. So hopefully this has been a little encouragement for you today. Like my mentor Jim Rohn said, a lot of things we're facing today are the same. And we talked about how there's nothing new under the sun. We talked about how to control ourselves, and we talk about how to control our economy. The fact of the matter is, whoever's in power doesn't change a single thing that I'm going to do in my day. What my neighbors do, what my competition do, what my negative relatives do, and I don't have any of those, but that's the phrase. The fact of the matter is, we get to control our own economy because we get to control ourselves, our outlook, our attitude, and our effort. I hope this has been helpful for you today. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope you will control your own economy because if you'll do that, you will have a great year.